Hi everyone, so we are going to be painting this, and how on earth do we paint it? We've got this sort of window of colour leading down this street on an otherwise loose and reasonably accurate um, but fun ink sketch. So watch this video to find out how to make this little window into the world. Hello everyone, it is Toby here from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we're going to have a bit of fun with our colours. So we're going to do this, this scene here, which is um, taking a photo taken on a slightly drizzly day in Newcastle. And then we're going to just use three colours. And we're going to use one of each primary, blue, uh, red, yellow, and use those really loosely to create something quite interesting. But on, on well underneath that, not on top of it, we're going to have a lovely ink sketch. So let's just get started. I'm going to be using my fountain pen here. This is a platinum preppy with carbon X ink, so it's waterproof ink, and a fine nib. I'm starting with the sort of glass uh, windowed building on the on the left of the centre. We're just sort of grabbing these big shapes. Um, as ever, just a, for me, a nice loose sketch is all we really need. So the, the vague idea that we've got four storeys of windows and then we've got a sort of bigger ground floor and we've got a lot of perspective to sort of deal with across here. It also gets confused because there's other buildings sort of coming up in the background. But don't overthink it, just find those big shapes. So we've got sort of lots of little rectangles for example just coming round. And immediately, just with these lines, we've got the feel of this street curving around before we get something nice and far more convenient to draw, which is a sort of spiky church. And I'm not too worried. The, the height of this church is a little wrong. It's a little too high. But things like this don't matter too much, as long as the broad grasp of what you're sketching is what you're after. And for me, I'm, I am after just the broad feel of a place. So... Don't overfocus on things which aren't important to you. Got these fun little traffic lights which we just put in. Again, just gets this sort of idea of a busy metropolis type of city. Got loads of traffic lights here as well. Now, one thing to note, I put these traffic lights too high in the background, which kind of means I have to put all these foreground traffic lights too high as well. Because if I make them lower, if I make them where they really are, sort of down here, it just looks wrong. Because um, you can immediately tell there's higher traffic lights which are further back, which just doesn't make any sense. So that's fine, we'll just play with what we've got and um, we'll have some tall traffic lights instead of short traffic lights. Moving across now, so I should have said at the beginning, we're going to be sketching across both pages here, which is why I started quite big. I want to have a bit of fun with my sketchbook. It's nice having, I think, this kind of texture in the middle. So that's why I've started so far across, because I'm happy to be sort of drawing across the middle. Also lets us sort of just get a bit more um, detail in, because we're, we're sketching bigger rather than confining ourselves to one small page. We can bring this whole sort of pavement down as a nice outline. It's got a little bit of interesting texture going up and down it. Before we get on to the next building. This one's got a little bit more detail hasn't it because it's it's closer to us and not quite at as heavy an angle. So we can start just capturing these kind of ideas. Again for me just quick sketches of the broad shape. So we've got these sort of cylinders and rectangles making up these sort of spires and we've almost got sort of triangles coming down either side. And then got layers of horizontal lines going across, which is sort of a bit um, higgledy piggledy. They go up and down depending on which, whether they're on the, the sides or in the middle. And just by adding in those and then joining them up with vertical lines, 
sure enough, we've got something which already looks a bit like the building in the in the reference. Certainly recognisable to my eye of faith. Then the last building, which we just sneak in, is far more just blocky, isn't it? It's a sort of modern contraption, so we can almost just do big rectangles. Then we can start capturing these huge windows. I'm going to let it fade off into the into the ether out here, but perhaps just capture a bit of frame detail here so that we can suggest that they are actually windows. Similarly back here actually, I moved on but I, I intended to come back and let's just add these these nice windows in. I think a few windows adds context to a building. I'm not pretending I've got all these proportions right and things but I've got what to me reminds me of that building which is fine for a lovely fun sketch especially if we're going to be really loose with the colours. We're already planning just to use three interesting colours. Then, so this is the kind of wall here. We've got the pavement that comes across like that. It comes even further across actually, so it comes all the way over here. Which is a nice sort of sweeping thing filling the image. And then we've got our statue. So it's, I think, fairly hard to make a statue fit a sketch. Um, I don't have an easy answer for it, but I think the thing I've, I've worked out for myself is it needs to be quite bold. It needs to definitely look like something different. Like you, you go bold with your trees, you're happy to make them different. I think for me, statues, to not just look like you've drawn a funny building, they really have to stand out. So the, the line work here is bolder the shapes sort of different to that that I'm using in the in the buildings and just yeah playing playing with those ideas until you're happy that you can achieve a, a good looking statue if you like. There we go just now adding the sort of concept of windows in here. Again just suggestions and the angles back here a bit too cute to really see anything but we can just again just add real suggestions with a few loose lines and back here there's not much to see really so we can just add a little bit of sort of hatching to, to provide that tone got similar windows going on back here i want the detail to be a bit less And I wanted to let this build, this um, statue really stand out as well. A little bit more hatching here and there. And then we've got the pavement coming in on this side with little, um, what are they called? Pillars, posts, I guess. Metalwork. <laughs> And let's pop in just the back of these these cars as well. So I've done a couple of videos recently on cars. Just focus on those shapes. Look, it's a sort of rectangle, rectangle, rectangle for the wheels, rectangle for the lights, and, and we've got something which looks like a car. We can do another one behind it. Same principles. And it's just quite easy to make it look like a car sort of fading off into the distance. What else can we add? Well, in the back we've got these little... Um, Lamp posts. We've got another lamp post actually coming out the front here as well. And there's a lamp post off to the side. I think we'll leave that one out. It's it's not really in our image. And then we've got these traffic lights, which kind of need to have something underneath them to suggest that they're not just floating. So I think that though is enough of a sketch. So we've got our, our scene. And how are we going to apply our sort of loose and quote-unquote fun colours? Well, I'm going to tr try something sort of really slightly experimental. What we're going to do is we're actually going to get out some tape. Which, admittedly, that doesn't sound too experimental yet, does it? But we're not going to tape around the whole image. We're going to tape off a sort of segment that we want to add our colour to. 
is you're going to give us the opportunity to just to apply a sort of loose square of colour on an otherwise quite neat and interesting image. And we want to cut off the top of some buildings as well. So just with having um, sketched in the middle of the sketchbook, we want that tape to be protecting. We don't want the colour to be running too far up. Admittedly, there's, there's always going to be a little bit of leakage down the middle there, but that's okay. A little bit is okay. And I'm trying to get it reasonably straight as well. So reasonably vertical. If we were doing this as a finished piece, perhaps you'd want to even get out a protractor and measure these angles. Make sure that you are going perpendicular and getting a really neat square. And there we go. So that is our little square. So the colour is all going to go inside here. And the three colours I'm going to be using are three of my more interesting colours, I think. So we're going to go with some turquoise blue. So it's co cobalt turquoise, sorry. We're going to go with some carmine. And for our yellow, let's go with quinacridone, which is a lovely sort of golden yellow, isn't it? So we've kind of got two warm colours, the um, carmine and the quinacridone, and then a sort of bright, and um, cool cobalt turquoise. Going to need a little bit of tissue and then we are good to go. So start off as ever with the blue and the colours we're using here we're going to sort of just use them to represent different things. So the blue is easy it's going to represent the sky right and we can just bring that down relatively neatly around our outline. Now we've got three colours, but we can mix them a bit. So we've got our quinacridone and our blue, and that can be our sort of natural to greeny colour. And we can add a few dots here and there just to see what we do with them later more than anything. And we can also just start getting those textures in, getting those little watercolour blooms, having a bit of fun. All right, so we've done done the, the natural stuff, we've done the sky, we can add a little bit more blue in that sky as well. And now the buildings, so that I guess that means our red is now the buildings, which kind of fits, you've got lots of lovely red brick buildings don't you? And we can just wash this really loosely over, and trying to keep it separate initially before we can then decide you know what kind of fun interactions we want to try and in gender with our colours and perhaps here this is where we'll, we'll let the colours mingle so the colours can warp and mingle between each other. These buildings, let's outline the, the sort of brickworky areas with our red and bring that down as well but perhaps we want the reflections to be a bit, bit more of our blue and our red and of course blue and red um, Neutralise. So what we'll get here is a sort of, oh, if I use a bit more blue, we'll get a sort of neutral to purple. And there you go, you just get this interesting changes in tone. So just playing with these sort of limited colours lets you explore as well how you can mix different colours and I mean, some people do real, real watercolour painting just with three colours. It's a, you know, you, you never really need more than this. But I guess what I'm trying to do is, is play with the concept of using three bold colours and only mixing them a little bit. But still, you can learn, you can learn from that and gain a bit of experience with your colours and how you might want to use them in the future. And there we go. And I've left the, the statue nice and bold again just to let it stand out a bit. I'm going to do some dropping in of colours while things are still a bit wet. Let things move around a little bit and then just use that blue again because it's a rainy day in the photo so use that blue just to pull down the rest of the page. And I'm going to leave these bollards, there's the word, these bollards I'm going to leave at least for now, I'm going to leave them white. And I think the same with this lamppost. Kind of just lets the image have little um, 
gaps which link it to the outside world, this this white world. And then touch in a few more bits of bold colour, especially at the edges, and we'll get this really crisp edge where the colour just instantly stops. And you can keep going for ages, you could be as fancy or not fancy as you want. You can keep going or what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, is stop there. And then obviously it needs to dry and we can carefully remove this tape and then see what it looks like. So here we go, pretty much dry, a little bit of dampness at the edges, but I think we're okay now to just really carefully unpeel our our tape, trying our best not to get our dirty fingers on the paper and see what our lovely little sort of crisp frame is going to give us. And there you go, so I think this has worked rather well. You've got this kind of window into the world, haven't you, full of colour and it rather a nice line drawing behind it. We could do this differently, we could do it with really really bold colours or we could do it really carefully, we could make these colours very realistic, we could make them looser, there's loads of ways you could play with this. You could even invert the process so we could have this as a sort of black and white and then have colours pooling out on the outside. Anyway I, I really enjoy having a little experiment, playing with new ways, especially framing things. So. Um, I hope you enjoy these kind of things as well. If so, do like and subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching. Of course, don't forget to pop a little signature when you've finished. <laughs>